Good morning, children of God. Welcome to today's Seed Time and Harvest broadcast. I'm blessed and privileged and honored and highly favored to have another opportunity to come and speak life to you on this day. I certainly pray that your day is blessed and that you are prosperous, that you're happy, healthy, and wealthy wherever you are gathered around the world listening to my voice today. Today we have a message that's going to come to you from the book of James. We're going to be looking at the book of James chapter 4 verses 13 through 15. If you like to make notes of that, again, James chapter 4 verses 13 through 15. And we're going to key in on verse number 14 today as our foundational or central truth. So I'm glad that you made notes of that. Go ahead and get your Bible, paper, pencils. Be prepared to take notes. I always ask you to do this because I want you to be able to search the scriptures right along with us to see whether the things we say are not. And we're going to entitle this message, What is Your Life? What is your life? In this particular portion of scripture, the writer presented that question to those that he was communicating with to cause them to ponder, to meditate upon that statement. For they were focusing their attention on things as if things would be the same forever. And if if life has taught us anything over the last several weeks and months, is that life will never be the same again. And so the question that you need to ponder today, thanks to God, is what is your life? What are the things that are important to your life? What things matter in your life? What things do you prioritize in life? What things do you devote or commit and dedicate yourself to? I want you to really think about that as we go through this week's message entitled, What is Your Life? So let's go ahead and take a look at our foundational text that we're going to use. Again, we're going to be reading from the book of James chapter 4. Let's begin reading at verse 13. Hallelujah. Verse 13 reads, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make a profit. Verse 14, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord is willing, we will live and do this or that. What is your life? Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We ascribe worth to your dominion, your power, your majesty. We thank you for the life and health and wealth that you have bestowed upon our lives. Help us not to take anything that you have done for us for granted, O oh God. Help us to be thankful today. Remind us, Father, that we should have an attitude of gratitude for all things are yours and we are yours. So today, Father, I ask that you, Holy Spirit, will come upon us afresh today to awaken us, to lead us, to guide us, to help us to be reminded of the things that matter most in this life. Help us to come to know the purpose and the destiny that you have determined for us. For you knew us before we were in our mother's womb. And we ask that your word will be fulfilled in our lives. Finish and complete the good work. I ask, Father, that you started in us. You have us here today for a reason. And help us to find that reason so that we may live out the purposes for our life in this earth. And we thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah. We say hallelujah to your name and amen. Again, saints, praise the Lord. I welcome you again to our Seed Time and Harvest broadcast. 
Here we read our portion of scripture from the book of James, chapter 14. We looked at verses 13 through 15, and we see where the writer presented a question, and that question is, what is your life? Just as the writer intended for those that he was writing to, to ponder that statement, I also speak to each and every one of you today to ponder that question, to reflect upon that question, what is your life? Now, many people, as they self-identify themselves, they begin by describing themselves as either a business person or they describe themselves by the occupation, the job occupation, People who are retired, they would say, I'm retired. Some people who may be unemployed say, I'm unemployed. Some people who may have disabilities may describe themselves as I'm disabled or handicapped. But not what your condition in life is, is the question. The question is, what is your life? No matter what category you may define yourself as, business person, employed, unemployed, a president of an organization, a husband, wife, son or daughter. What are the details that make up your life? What things constitute life for you? And this is what I want you to think about. I want you to think about the things that you prioritize and the things that you should prioritize with your life. And the reason why that is true is because of what was written to us in this portion of scripture that we read. We notice that after the writer presented that question of what is your life, he can, that verse number 14 continues to say, you are a mist. Another translation says, you are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. So whatever or however you describe your life, you are just a vapor or a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Unfortunately, during this latest pandemic, just here in the U.S. alone, it is reported that over 50,000 people have lost their lives due to COVID-19. It, 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 it probably should cause many of us to think about, so what is life to us? I'm sure none of these people six months ago could have envisioned their lives coming to an end under such circumstances. Many of these same people who may have perished, may have been vibrant, active citizens of our society. Some of them may have been business persons. Some of them may have been husbands, wives, sons, and daughters. But now life has ended. And that should cause all of us to think about how am I living my life? Seeing that or realizing that or being reminded that even my life, even I am just a vapor or a mist that is only here for a little while. Thanks. As you think about this question, as you ponder what your life is, I pray that you will come to the realization or in some cases may be reminded of the person, of the things, that God wants you to accomplish with your life in this earth. He, may you ponder and think about the way that we treat others and the way that, that, that we give, the way that we love, the way that we serve. For we only have a little while and then we also will vanish. So this should be, I pray, a wake up call or maybe an inspiration for some of you who have been delaying things that you wanted to get done. You've been 
having various excuses and maybe some actual stumbling blocks that were in your path. I want you to find a way to seek God today as this particular portion of scripture tells us in verse number 15 where it reads instead you ought to say if the Lord is willing we will live and do this or that what is the thing that you pray that prayer as you pray that prayer today what is the thing that if the Lord is willing, you will live to do this or that. I want you to, to, to think about several questions as you meditate upon our message today about what is your life. Not only should we think about that question, but, but, but it may be other subset of questions that need to be answered in order to help us to know that final answer. And here are two other questions that we see presented in verse number 15. So what is the this and the that for you? Again, as verse 15 says, instead of saying, instead of saying what? Instead of saying that today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, Instead of saying that we'll spend a year there, carry on business and make profit, he's, the verse 15 says, instead, we ought to say, if the Lord is willing. Hallelujah, somebody give God praise. If the Lord is willing, we will live, which is number one. And then secondly, we will do this or that. I want you to think about in addition to the question about what is your life, what is the this or that, that if the Lord is willing and you live, what is the this and that that you will be or do or accomplish? Hallelujah, saints of God. For we know, saints, that our life, all of our lives are in God's hand. So I really want you to think about this question or these set of questions that are presented to us in these particular portions of scripture in order that we may rightfully live our lives, that we may approach life with the right mindset, that we may have the right intents or intentions in life, that we realize how very important every day is and how much we can, we can accomplish if God is with us. Somebody said to me, if the Lord is willing, hallelujah. So when you think about the question about what is your life, and then you start looking at some of you may go through a litmus or a list of things, all the things that are wrong with your life. Some people may say my life is miserable. Some people may say my life is, is, is in a crisis right now. My life is in turmoil. And those things may be circumstances that are surrounding your life currently. But I want you to know that God doesn't see you as a person who's a victim. He sees you as someone who is victorious. And that means you gain victory by overcoming things in life. So I want you to begin to know that if you're here, you're listening to my voice, you are already victorious. You've overcome lots of storms. You've overcome lots of situations in life even in the midst of whatever you may be going through now. Under the pandemic, if you're a business owner and it seems like you're about to lose your business and your income, your house, you've lost your job, some of you maybe. Some of you may be fortunate enough to be thriving in business and have a, 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 a continuing ongoing job. So what is your life? What should be your contribution? How can we contribute? I pray you'll be thinking this way. How can I contribute to our society? Not only to make my life better, but to help make the lives of others better. Saints, whether we want to accept it or not, life can never go back to what we considered to be normal before. Many people's lives will have a constant reminder on why life 
can never just go back to normal again. They've lost loved ones. Some children have lost fathers. Some fathers have lost children. Some husbands have lost wives. Some wives have lost husbands. Some of you have lost friends, family members. Life cannot go back to the normal as it was prior to this pandemic. And so we must now take a fresh look at life and ask this question, what is, what is my life? That was the question that the writer here in the book of James presented. And it's the question that the Holy Spirit wants each and every one of us to think about. We can also visualize what we want our life to look like. If you're out of a job, you can actually seek God. If God is willing, you will go to this place or that place and you will find a new job. Or you will get new business. You, 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 if you're sick right now, you will recover in the name of Jesus. If the Lord is willing, we will do this or that. Hallelujah. Some of you will go on to sell millions of books. Some of you will employ thousands of people. If the Lord is willing, we will do this or that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we don't have to always just consider the bad things that are happening. We can also speak forth the positive things that we would like to see happen in our personal life, in our nation, in our city, and in our world. And then we can make those petitions and supplications with thanksgiving unto God. And ask God, say, if the Lord is willing, Hallelujah. We can put it before the throne of grace. Even now, saints, one of the writers in the book of Galatians said we can go boldly before the throne of grace that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Question that we present to you today is what is your life? Not what you do in life. Not what your circumstances in life are, but what is your life? Why are you here? In some cases, we may say to some of you who have overcome serious crises in life, why are you still here? Hallelujah today. I believe the Lord wants us to know this to seek him in such a way that we can draw near to God and then God will draw near to us. I believe every word that God has spoken, every scripture that's written about our God, his goodness, his kindness, his faithfulness, his love, his mercy, his power, his anointing, hallelujah. I believe every word that's spoken about our God and I want you to believe not only in God, but that you place your faith in him, that you place all your cares and your worries, place it upon him, put their entire weight of it on him so that you don't have to be burdened with it today. Come now, verse 13 says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow. Some people are so prideful here in uh, our particular state in the U.S., there seem to be more concerned about the economy now than health. I say to those individuals what the scripture says in these texts, come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make a profit. And I say to them what the writer says here in verse 14, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. And the question for you as it is for others, what is your life? There's a scripture text and another portion of scripture says, man says he will store up all the things that he had for himself. He will tear down his barns. He had said to himself, I'm going to tear down my barns because they are filled with all the stuff I have and build bigger barns. And then tomorrow I'm going to eat and drink and be merry. And that portion of scripture, we also know that 
the question was presented to this man, what is your life? So thanks to God, all of those who are placing seemingly priorities over prophets than people, the question to you is, what is your life? We all who are listening today, we need to think about this question. It's nothing wrong or evil about having profit or things, but what is your life? What is What are you gonna do with that life? If scripture says, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? These are, these are questions I really want you to ponder during this season. And it's not, and it should not necessarily be a dreary or a dreadful contemplation because God wants to do, can do, giving each and one of us today an opportunity for him to work through us to accomplish wonderful, mighty, and good things in the earth. I'm gonna close with this parable that I just spoke with you about. If you want to make note of it, it's in Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. And I'll read from the New International Version, start with verse 16. And Jesus told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Verse 18, then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. Verse 19, and I will say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. And here is the statement of God in verse 20. But God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourselves? And verse 21 concludes by saying, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. What is your life? Father, we thank you today. We praise you. We, we ascribe worth to you. We come before you humbly as we know how, Father. Some of us coming asking for forgiveness, God. Some of you us coming asking for mercy. Some of us coming before your presence asking for grace. But we all come asking, seeking, making supplications that your will will be done in our lives, Father yet not our will, but let thine will be done. We seek after you for your divine guidance and direction. We know that you are a, a faithful God. You are loving God, you are merciful God. We ask that you, your love and your favor and your mercy will be bestowed upon us as we, uh, as we acknowledge that you are sovereign. For it is only as you will, Father, that our lives will prosper. It is only as you will that we will gain favor. It is only as you will that we will be healed and saved, delivered and set free. Even now, give us clear guidance. Give us a, 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 a mindset to do good in this earth, to be better in this earth, to be wiser, to be stronger. Hallelujah. We thank you for it even now. For we surrender all to thee, Jesus, all that we are and all that we own belongs to you. So we come before your presence now, acknowledging you as sovereign, seeking your divine favor and wisdom so that we can understand what is our life. Hallelujah. Amen.